Dear students, welcome to 2020-2021 academic year. I'm Ahmaral Urazova, the senior lecturer of the Department of English and German Languages. The course I'm going to present you is Introduction into Intercultural Communication. This course deals with interrelation of culture, communication, and psychology and anthropology. The topic of this lecture for today is basic notions of intercultural communication. During the lecture, we will focus on the following six questions, the main of which are the concept of intercultural communication, second, intercultural communication as a field of study, thirdly, communication as a process, and other questions. Intercultural communication as a field of study began after World War II. Let's look at the history. You know that several centuries ago the world seemed small and most people only communicated with others much like themselves. A villager in medieval Europe seldom traveled as far as a nearby town market. There were no strangers in the village. Over the years, improved transportation brought wider travel, newer means of communication, allowed information exchange over longer distances. Today, improved technologies of communication like the Internet and more rapid means of transportation have increased the likelihood of intercultural communication. Trade and travel brought strangers into face-to-face -face contact. So did invasion, warfare and colonization. For many people, the simple joy of learning about other cultures is sufficient reason to study intercultural communication. They are curious about how different worldviews affect communication and human understanding. They presume that everyone sees the world pretty much as they do, and they are ethnocentric, so they judge other cultures as inferior to their own culture. And others, xenophobic people, fear that which is foreign, strange and different. The scholars Chin and Starosta and others uh, distinguish the several periods of studies in intercultural communication. First, in 1950s, was uh, described as decade of beginning. Hall and others in Foreign Service Institute began looking at communication using a largely linguistic and anthropological framework. While much research uh, was observational, the thinking was cause-effect and realistic. The second uh, stage period was uh, in 1960s. It was called Decade of Silence. The third period, 1970s, was described la like Decade of Research. In this period, new textbooks, new divisions emerged. Communication picks up intercultural communication, but the scholars looked at it were largely interpersonal communication scholars who looked at communication through a social scientific lens. In the field of studies in intercultural communication, scholars distinguish uh, six communication types. Firstly, cultural communication takes place within a given culture. Example, or to which might be, um, uh, such as coal miners in Karaganda, or uh, divers in uh, Pacific Ocean. Cross-cultural communication is the communication comparison between one or more cultures. The example, how Japanese and Hawaiian perceive conflict, but without actually looking at what happens when one person talks to someone from another culture. Then, intercultural communication, when people from two different cultures communicate with culture. Co-cultural communication I describe it and uh, observe it when people from two, gru two groups within a single dominant culture communicate. The example might be, these groups were formerly known as subcultures, but many scholars have uh, moved to co instead of sub to reflect that all cultures within the dominant culture live side by side and not in subordination from one another. 
intercultural or intergroup communication as the communication where group identity like perceived difference, stereotypes, prejudice is the issue uh, and not real differences in culture. The last one, uh, international communication. So we are certainly to refer to media system used around the world. So the speech of the media is international communication. The emphasis usually lies on being a competent speaker. Listening is a key skill that many business personnel do not exercise enough. For intercultural communication, attentive listening is critical to be able to understand meaning, read between the lines and enable the emphasis with the speaker. Listening and speaking must work in tandem for effective intercultural communication. Speaking well is not about accent, use of grammar and vocabulary. Rather, intercultural communication is enhanced through positive speech, such as encouragement, affirmation, recognition, and phrasing requests clearly to expressing opinions sensitively. Large amounts of intercultural information can be read in people's dress, body language, interaction, and behavior. One should be aware of differences with his own culture and try to understand the roots of behavior. Asking questions helps you to expand your intercultural knowledge. People need to recognize and understand that sometimes intercultural differences are annoying and frustrating. In these situations, patience is definitely a virtue. Through patience, respect is won and cross-cultural understanding is enhanced. Being flexible, being adapted, adaptable and open-minded are the route to successful cross-cultural communication, understanding, embarrassing and addressing cross-cultural differences leads to breaking our cultural barriers, which results in better lines of communication, mutual trust and critical thinking. Following these five cross-cultural communication needs will allow you to improve lines of communication and better intercultural awareness and successful cross-cultural relationships. Cross-cultural communication, also frequently referred to as intercultural communication, is a field of study that looks at how people from different cultural backgrounds try to communicate. Cross-cultural communication as a field of study is a combination of many other scholarly fields. These fields inc include anthropology, psychology, linguistics, communication, and cultural studies. The term culture is taken from anthropology, wherein it embraces the entire way of life of members of a community, insofar as it is conditioned by that members. Linguistic anthropology is a comparative study of ways in which language reflects and influences social life. It explores the many ways in which language practices define patterns of communication, formulate categories of social identity and group members, organize large-scale cultural beliefs and ideologies, and in conjunction with other forms of meaning-making, equip people with common cultural representations of their natural and social world. Psycholinguistics or psychology of language is a study of psychological and neurobiological factors that enable humans to acquire, use, comprehend and produce language. Language and our thought grows closely interwoven and in a sense one and the same. There are two uh, fields of linguistics which are essential for cross-cultural communication. The ethnolinguistics and social linguistics. Ethnolinguistics or cultural linguistics is a field uh, which studies the relations between language and culture and the way different ethnic group receives uh, the world. It is combination between ethnology and linguistics. And as for the communication, which is a fundamental process by which pattern in the medium move through time to space, Communication ensures community in the development of culture. Every new generation begins its work of learning from the point where the previous generation left off.
Communication arose and developed with the rise of men and the formation of society in the process of labor. Communication is a process where the information is enclosed in a package, channeled and imparted by a sender to a receiver via some medium. The receiver then decodes the message and gives the sender a feedback. Communication is interactive. An important influence on its effectiveness is our relationship with others. Communication is a social interaction, where at least two inter interacting agents share a common set of signs and a common set of semiotic rules. We do most of our communication using speech and our understanding of speech to greet people and tell them our news, to ask and answer questions, and to use the telephone. We say communication is extremely diverse in its forms. Communication as the art of transmitting information, ideas and attitudes from one person to another may, may be verbal and nonverbal. Communication types are differentiated according to communication channels. These are means available to communicate with another person or group. They may include direct face-to-face -face communication, telecommunications, that is, telephone, email, written communications, or indirect communication through third parties or the media. Culture is the concept, is the basic concept of cross-cultural communication. Culture is the integrated pattern of human knowledge, belief, and behavior that depends, mostly depends, upon man's capacity for learning and transmitting knowledge to succeeding generations. The term culture refers to all the learned and not only by uh, nature characteristics common to a particular group of people. It is defined as way of life, especially general customs and beliefs of a particular group of people at a particular time, like youth, working class, Russian, Roman, mass culture. I, secondly, ideas, customs and art that are produced or shared by a particular society. The example, he was a fervent admirer of Roman and Greek culture. Thirdly, a particular society or civilization, especially one considered in relation to its ideas, its art, and its ways of life. Uh, as, for instance, the rich history of French civilization and cultures. Fourth, the system of communication which consists of a set of sounds and written symbols of course used by people of a particular country or region for talking or writing. Primary cultural dimensions are patterns of thought, patterns of behavior, patterns of artifact, and imprints in nature. Pragmatics and the basic units of verbal communication, texts and speech acts. Pragmatics explains how people users are able to overcome apparent ambiguity since meaning relies on the manner, place, time, etc. of an utterance. The ability to understand another speaker's intent, intended meaning called pragmatic competence. Speech act is a technical term in linguistics and philosophy of language. It can be defined as an utterance in terms of speaker's intention and the effect it has on a listener. Example, a common example of a speech act is when a priest says, I now pronounce you man and wife in a marriage ceremony and thereby enacts a marriage contract. Summing it all up, we can say that language is a complex code, broadly constructed and extensively shared. It allows a group of only human beings to communicate their thoughts to one another. A major advantage of human language being is a learned symbolic communication system is that it is infinitely flexible. Meanings can be changed and new symbols can be created. This is ev ev evidenced by the fact that new words invented daily and the meaning of the old ones changed. This allows people to respond linguistically to major environmental, historical and social changes. Different definitions of culture reflect different theoretical bases for understanding or criteria for evaluating human activity. Culture can be defined as all the behaviors, arts, beliefs and institutions of a popular that are passed down from generation to the generation. 
Culture has been called the way of life for an entire society. As such, it includes codes of manners, dress, language, religion, rituals, norms of behavior, such as law and morality, and system of beliefs, as well as the arts and astronomy. Culture is symbolic. In addition, the best example of this is language. The most important symbolic aspect of culture is language, using words to represent objects and ideas. Through language, humans are able to transmit culture from one generation to one gen another generation. In particular, language makes it possible to learn from cumulative shared experience. Without it, one could not inform others about events, emotions and others, ex other experiences to which they were not a party. Language is both part of culture as well as the medium by which culture defined and described. Thanks for watching the video connected with the topic number one of the course. For the Zoom session on our first meeting, be ready and revise the questions of the lecture.